Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we are at Morgan Buick GMC in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, or currently nose-to-nose, -nose, between the 2023 version of the GMC Sierra and the 2023 Toyota Tundra. Yes, this model in the video is a 22, but basically the same. So let's talk a little bit about, right off the bat, differences in length. Not much of a difference, about a two inch difference. 231 inches is roughly the measurement, 231.92 is what GMC says on the Sierra. The overall length of the Tundra, according to Toyota, is 233.6 inches. And you will notice that the Sierra is sitting a little bit higher off the ground. Obviously, there are some cosmetic differences. Let's talk about those before we get to some of the really big differences that you're going to find if you are maybe torn between buying one or the other. Taking a look from this head-on perspective, both trucks have a very aggressive look. They look sporty at the same time, and both are capable off-road. There are obviously multiple trim levels with multiple features and functionality to help depending on what you want to do with your truck. As far as the overall look goes, we're going to have the well common look of the GMC headlights and turn signal housings and the daytime running lights right here. But one thing you will notice is that we have the singular light right here as far as what's up here. And then we have a couple of different lights up here as far as our low beams go with the Toyota. And you do have an animated turn signal. I hope that shows up well on the GoPro. Sometimes we get that flickering effect that makes things look animated when they're really not. Now, again, trim level specific thing is going on here. If you like chrome, we have the SLT with the Sierra right here. And we're going to have our tow hooks on the front. So if the Toyota happens to get stuck somewhere, well, I guess that means the GMC can come and help. Now, one thing that will be different here, trim level specific, we don't have a forward facing camera here on the GMC, but that option is available. We do have the forward facing camera here on the Toyota. And if you want the more squared off look, well, both are pretty squared off, but you have a little bit more of a slope to the lines of the hood right here on the Toyota. Depending on who you are, that might work and that might not work for you. And as we work our way in, taking a look at the side view mirrors. A little more squared off look, the chrome mirror cap, again, the SLT trim level here with the GMC Sierra. You're going to have the body colored mirror cap here on the Toyota. This is the premium trim level that we have with the Toyota. Blind spot monitoring is there. And obviously you're going to have passive entry where you push this button on the Sierra and you can lock and unlock all four doors. Well, you can do the same thing here. You just touch the door handle on the Toyota. And as long as you have the remote on your person, those features are going to work. The Sierra does sit a little bit higher than what we have with the Toyota. Not necessarily an issue because, well, with this particular model, with the SLT, we have the affixed running boards or side steps running boards. I kind of dated myself there, didn't I? Side steps there. With this trim level, the same thing is available on the Sierra as what we have right here as far as the power steps go. So depending on your situation, well, you can choose accordingly. Tail light designs, well, let's see here. What do we have? Maybe a little bit more modern look with the Toyota. Tell me what you think about that. It is animated, as you can see. Hopefully that's showing up on the screen as well as possible. One thing we won't have between the two trucks, and well, let's take a quick look here. Tell me what you think about the tail light housing between the two trucks. Which one do you think looks more modern? But one thing you won't find with the Toyota that you will find here, the built-in bumper steps on the GMC Sierra, that's going to be something you're going to get no matter what your trim level is for 2023. And we may not have the built-in bumper steps on the Toyota, but that doesn't mean there are not steps here. So I'm going to let down the tailgate and look what happens. Just in case you were wondering about the two. So the one thing that people might say, well, that's just one more thing to break. Well, maybe so. But just so you know what's here as far as the options go. And before we open the hoods, let's talk a little bit about build quality here. You can learn a lot by opening and closing the doors on each model. So let's start with the GMC Sierra. And now we'll go with the Toyota Tundra. 
and we'll not only do that with the doors but also on the hood release let's open the hood real quick we'll pull on the release and we'll come over here and do the same thing with the gmc sierra I don't know if you could really hear the difference in that, and by no means is this meant to be a knock on the Toyota Tundra, but when you open the doors and close the doors and open the hood, and we'll close the hood in just a minute as well, and give that same test, the fit and finish just sounds better on the GMC. I know a lot of people are going to ask about that. That's why I put it in the video. That doesn't necessarily mean that one truck is better than the other, but for those of you who may ask for such a thing and such a demonstration, there you go. With the Sierra, you're going to have more engine options, but that doesn't mean that the Tundra is lacking in horsepower and torque. So let's talk a little bit about what we have here with the Sierra first. You're gonna have the 2.7 liter four cylinder, the three liter diesel engine that's going to be the six cylinder, and then the two V8 options here for the Sierra. The 5.3 and the 6.2, and horsepower numbers range between 305 up to a maximum horsepower of 420, and the torque numbers between the four engines will range between a low of 383 pounds-feet of torque up to a very impressive 495 pounds-feet of torque. And believe it or not, that number comes from the three-liter diesel. It is not on one of the V8s. Those max out with a 6.2 at 460 pounds-feet. And here with the Tundra, we have two different options. The 3.5 liter turbocharged V6, 389 horsepower, and the torque numbers come in at an impressive 408 pounds feet. If we were going to have a tug of war between these two trucks, well, you would definitely want to choose the Toyota and have the 3.5 liter turbocharged V6 paired with the electric motor, the hybrid version, because it makes 437 horsepower, but are you ready for this? 583 pounds-feet of torque. Pretty impressive numbers. So let's do this. I'm gonna finish things up with the engine details by closing the hood on the Toyota first. And then we'll walk over here and close the hood on the GMC Sierra and see which one sounds like it has better build quality. You tell me what you think. On the Tundra, you're looking at 11,310 pounds on max towing, 1,940 with the max payload. You do have the dampened tailgate here. And as you can see, you have multiple tie-down points plus the in-bed lighting. Not a whole lot going on here, but I will show you this. Let's see if I can do this. These cleats are movable. So you're just gonna loosen that, you can push in, and then you can move that, well, into a lot of different places. I'm not gonna move it too far just because I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that, but you can see how all of that works. Pretty simple to deal with, pretty simple to use. But we're gonna have to spend a little bit more time over there on the GMC. 9,400 pounds will be max towing for the Sierra. 2050 will be max payload. And while the Multi-Pro tailgate does operate as a conventional tailgate to match what we did with the Tundra, there's a little bit more going on here. So let's do this. Do you need a table? Well, guess what? There's a table that's gonna be sitting a little bit higher than the tailgate. That has its advantages. At least that's one of the ways you can use this. You can also take this area and turn it into a bed extender if you need something to butt up against that to keep it in place. That's a good option, but that's not the only bed extender that this truck has. Well, it is. It just works two different ways. Here's way number two. And so there is your second option if you would like to use that as a bed extender. And I don't mean to sound like an infomercial, but there's more. <laughs> okay, yes, it's okay to laugh. So we can actually use this area. Let me just put this into perspective, at least based on the way I would use it. This is how you would set things up to turn this into a step, and I'll do that in just a second. But it also gives you an easier reach into the back of the bed if you need to get closer to something that's more towards the center if your arms are longer than mine are. You can do even better than I just did. And yes, that is a step. It has the graphite material down here for sure-footedness, kind of like grip tape on a skateboard. And there are a couple of options as to what you can have here. You can see the lights right here that help to illuminate things. You can also have the kicker audio system, and you also have the extendable handle. Is extendable the right term for that? Well, whatever the case is, you can put that handle in place. You have the bed liner, which we have on both trucks. 
And here we have 12 different tie down points, six on each side, three in the front, three in the rear. We're going to have our power outlet and we do have the in bed LED lighting. I don't have that turned on right now, but you can see it right there and quite a bit of space within the interior of both beds. And we'll take a look into the back seat of the Tundra to begin our interior tour. You can see that obviously this is the hybrid trim level because or the hybrid version under the hood because of the blue stitching right there. Now that's one thing you can't get with the Sierra is a hybrid powertrain. Tell me what you think about that. Is that a deciding factor in your truck shopping experience? We will have the upper and the lower door bins here, quite a bit of space for drinks and all that good stuff. We have some space underneath the seats right here as far as the Tundra goes, obviously on both sides. One thing that will be different here, and not a major issue, I don't think, but the floor between the two on the Tundra, you have a larger transmission tunnel here. So whoever sits in that middle seat right there probably not going to be quite as comfortable as they would be in the GMC Sierra. And we'll take a quick look here at what we have with the center console as far as the rear seat passengers go. More drink holders there. You have everything as far as the heated and ventilated seats. And just so I can demonstrate that, I turned on the ignition. So there's your heated seats and there's the ventilated seat as well. Not very many vehicles on the market in this day and age offer both. So kudos to Toyota where that is concerned. And you'll have your USB connectivity and the power outlet right there. As you can see, going to have the seat back pockets available to put things in for rear seat passengers and the good old fashioned fold down cup holders or fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And again, access to the tools to change the spare tire. Well, there you go with everything. There is all of that. I'm not going to get all of that out, but that's what that is. And all I did here to lower that was pull on this release, just so you can see the functionality back here. But there is one thing here in the Tundra you don't have the option to have with the Sierra. What is it? It's a panoramic sunroof. I know a lot of you say you'd rather have a panoramic sunroof option. Tell me who you are. Would you rather have the panoramic sunroof, a conventional size sunroof, or maybe you're like me and would prefer no sunroof at all. And comparing door panels. Well, we don't have the upper door bin, but a nice large door bin overall for the GMC Sierra. And you kind of have an all-in-one of sorts right here because you only have to raise the seat cushions themselves to gain access not only to storage underneath, but also to the tools to change the tire. Now, let me do this before we do anything else just to show you the differences here. Notice that the transmission tunnel here is much lower. It's not a completely flat floor, but it's a lot closer here on the Sierra than it is on the Tundra. You know what? Most likely you're going to be in the driver's seat. You're not going to worry about that as much as your rear seat passengers will. So you can let them kind of make the decision on which truck they want, right? Okay, it doesn't really work that way, does it? But one thing that I really have to say I like here, that the Sierra offers that the Tundra does not. The in-seat storage right here. Just GMC taking advantage of additional potential storage capacity within the interior of this truck. You can fit a lot of items in there. And we'll hop on inside here. We're going to have the rear seat pockets the same way on both trucks. Same way here as we did on the Tundra. The cup holders there on the rear of the center console and air conditioning vents along with a couple of connectivity options. And you can have optional heated seats back here in the Sierra, but you can't get ventilated seats. And while this truck does not actually have a sunroof, if it did, it would just be the conventional size that would reside in that area of the truck that we're looking at right now. And in the interest of fair reporting, I did want to show that both trucks do have the power folding side view mirrors. So let me just fold those in. All I did was push the button right here. We can do the same thing with the Tundra. I'm going to do that a little bit differently here. We're going to use the remote to pull that off in this particular case before we hop on into the interior and take a look at the front seat. And you could see that that was locked, put my hand on there, and now it's unlocked. And much like we saw on the rear doors, the front doors will have the upper and the lower door bins, quite a bit of storage space, power seats for the driver and the passenger, both heated and ventilated. We'll hop on inside here and just take a quick look across the dashboard. You do have the glove box here, a decent amount of space in there. We're going to have several one touch buttons here. I don't, probably don't need to tell you too much about what that is. There is your wireless charging. Now you're gonna have a completely different location on wireless charging in the Sierra. 
and we'll have the conventional style shifter here located on the center console that's also going to be the same on both trucks do you prefer this style of shifter i know a lot of you don't like push button shifters or would you prefer the column shifter that's always seemingly a favorite among most people and you do have a lot of storage space here a couple of different options with a very interesting multi-use center console you also have the let's see if i can get that to open there we go the safe that's an option here we're going to have some connectivity options as you can see right there and a little bit of space so obviously having the safe takes away from space as far as just conventional space but there is a lot down in there depending on what you want to keep in that particular area of the truck and again on the sierra we're going to pretty much mirror what we saw on the rear doors with the nice large door bins here but we won't have the upper door bin i don't know that is that big of a deal for most people and again, power seats, heated and ventilated. One thing that is definitely going to be different here on this truck is going to be the fact that you have an upper and a lower glove box. So whatever you want to use those for, you can. And again, those one touch buttons, your smart folks, I don't need to explain what all of that is. There is the shifter, a different look, but the same basic functionality as far as that goes there are the cup holders and there is the wireless charging pad so you're going to insert your phone in just kind of almost feed it to the charging pad right there as you can see it's not going to come on because the ignition isn't on in the truck right now but tell me which one you prefer more do you like this style or what we have in this area that's almost vertical completely vertical over there in the toyota tundra not completely but fairly close to it we'll also have quite a bit of space down in here there's no safe in this particular case but we do have connectivity options the usb and the or excuse me the usb cables or outlets over there and our power outlet right here and now we'll start on the driver's side with the toyota we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we have here again a lot of features i don't need to tell you about you know what all is there you do have a couple of settings for seat memory and again those upper and lower door bins several features here you can turn on and off again you smart folks know what all of that is now Depending on trim level, both trucks will have adjustable, fully adjustable, tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheels. So in this case, it's the power adjustable. You do have that on the GMC as well, depending on which version you choose to buy, which trim level you choose to buy. And we'll go ahead and start things up. Here are the graphics for the GMC, or excuse me, for the Toyota as far as the instrument cluster goes now you don't get that across both screens and i apologize for that flickering effect that is unfortunately due to the shutter speed of my gopro and no matter what i change it to it doesn't fix anything but you can see what you have here as far as the instrument cluster goes a nice modern look toyota done, has done a very good job here and then your steering wheel mounted controls and that nice large infotainment screen let's see if we can find an angle where we don't have any issues i don't know that we can really do that i apologize for that but you can see what all is here and this truck does have a few more features than what we have on the sierra at least in today's video we do have multiple camera views but one thing that i like here is the surround view it's a live view it's going around on the truck and you know what if you say to yourself even though that's the color of your truck right there if you want your truck to be red today if you want it to be white if you want it to be black what color do you want you can choose that's kind of interesting how that works but you can see what all is there and how that works a pretty simplistic system if we go into reverse you can see more camera views you have the overhead view right there and we'll just go through and look at a few things that we have as far as that goes quite a bit going on here a lot of camera views and you pretty much have those same views available with the gmc sierra even though the sierra over there next to us doesn't necessarily have all of those camera views those are available and like i said you have the ventilated and heated seats i dare not leave those heated seats on today because it is warm outside in fact let me show you how warm it is outside 84 degrees if it stayed like this all summer i wouldn't complain and one more thing I do want to show you that you have as an available option on both trucks the rear view camera mirror you can turn that off if you so desire 
and turn that into a conventional mirror. It just depends on what your preference and situation is. And once again, basically the same thing we saw on the rear doors. We'll be here on the front doors with our door bins and all that good stuff. You have the same features and functionality here. A couple of settings for seat memory. Honestly, at the prices of a lot of these trucks today, I'd like to see seat memory available on both trucks on both sides, I should say, on the driver and the passenger side. And this truck does have, I didn't realize it did, it has the power adjustable steering wheel just like the Tundra does. So obviously, you know, you pretty much can get the same features on both. But one thing that is dramatically different, and hopefully I can give you a good view of both at the same time, is you have animated graphics on both screens. Really nice look here as far as that goes. We'll reach up here and start the engine up and take a look at the 13.2 inch screen that came out for 2022 and obviously carries over here into 2023. We also have the 13.4 inch touchscreen over here. A little bit of a different layout than what we saw with the Toyota Tundra, but very worth, easy to use, very user friendly without getting tongue twisted. And you can see that you have your steering wheel mounted controls here. We do have the paddle shifters here. And one thing that is different is you have Google Assistant, which I will not demonstrate today because apparently a lot of you have Google Assistant in your house. And when you're listening or watching my video, listening to or watching my video, I unintentionally set that off. So we won't do that. So you know how that works. But everything here pretty much voice activated as far as this truck goes. Now, we only have the singular camera view here but we do have multiple camera views available for this truck, depending on how it's optioned and depending on trim level, a pretty simple system to use. Obviously, when we go into reverse, we'll get the same thing. And you do have the available overhead 360 degree view as well. So again, options. And as I told you earlier, we do have dual zone climate control on both trucks. I didn't mention that in the Toyota, but you have, as you can see here, the ventilated seats and the heated seats again on an 84 degree day with the sun beating down i'm going to leave the ventilated seats on because that is so important and i don't mean to upset toyota but you know what this multi-pro tailgate is just more usable for showing off the remotes for each truck for the most part basically the same features and functionality on each remote similar in size both very durable sturdy remotes and definitely going to get the job done okay we're going to start our test drive portion of the video i know a lot of you like to see the test drives and so i will add that into the video we're starting out with the gmc sierra i have test driven i don't know how many sierras a bunch so it shouldn't be terribly difficult for me to tell the difference between the two trucks just because I have, I think I've only driven the current generation of the Tundra one time. So this will only be my second time to do that when we hop into that truck. So, you know, it's, it's such a challenge to try and find equal engine horsepower and torque between the two trucks. We'll just do the best we can to explain what the differences are between the two. Now this truck has the 5.3 liter V8. So that means 355 horsepower and 383 on the torque. It has a 10 speed automatic transmission and it will definitely get up and go. It doesn't have the highest horsepower and it does not have the highest torque rating. But we will have that experience with the Toyota when we get out with it later on. But as far as being able to get down the road with no problem when you need to, yeah, this truck will definitely do it. I'm in the wrong place to drop the hammer, so I'm not going to do that. But trust me, it definitely gets up and runs. And obviously, so does the 6.2 liter and so forth. All of the engine options for these trucks do a good job considering what they are. But if you want the most horsepower, obviously you're gonna have to go with the 6.2 liter V8 because it's making 420 horsepower. And we talked about all those numbers earlier. This truck is enjoyable to drive, and depending on how much technology you want and how much money you want to spend, well, obviously you can do more than what we have if what, we, what we've looked at here on this particular truck today. But it's a very nice truck to drive. Very easy to learn the technology here. That is one of the things that I personally believe is a pretty big difference between the two. It's not that the Tundra has terribly difficult technology to use, but there's a couple of features there that I've tried to figure out that I can't. And I'm sure if I sat down and took the time to do it, watched a tutorial on YouTube, no big deal. So you, know, you don't have to worry about that. Don't let that scare you off from the Tundra. But in my personal opinion, I think the technology here in the GMC Sierra is a little bit easier to use. 
You do have Google Assistant. That definitely makes a big difference. The Sierra definitely has a lot to offer in a multitude of ways as far as technology and capabilities go. The ride quality here, well, it's a truck. It doesn't ride like a Cadillac, but it also does not ride like a tank, although I'm going to go around that big bump right there. I'll do the same thing with the Tundra later on. And handling, well, it's going to be different to see or interesting to see what the differences may be in handling. But this truck handles well for what it is. Uh, nobody's going to likely take this out for autocross, as will be the case with the Tundra as well. But the Tundra has a slightly appearance. I, don't, I didn't look up the numbers on the height between the two, but the Tundra obviously looks to sit a little bit lower than this truck does. And so you're going to have some handling differences between the two. But I tell you what, this is a nice truck to drive. It gets down the road no problem. The seating is comfortable. And obviously you have a lot of different features and functionality. You step up to the Denali and the Denali Ultimate and you can have massage seats. That's definitely a very nice feature to have. Overall, the Sierra is a great truck, fun to drive. It's definitely going to get the job done with every engine option that is available because, well, depending on what you need to do, you'll buy the truck with that particular engine. So now that we're out on the road with the Tundra, I definitely noticed that the ride quality seems to be better. It's not perfect, but it does seem to soak up the bumps a little better than did the Sierra. One thing that is going to separate these two trucks out, I know a lot of people like to know, do these vehicles have remote start? Well, both trucks do have available remote start. If you have remote start with the Sierra, it's going to be on the remote. It's not a big deal. If you want remote start with the Tundra, you will have to buy a subscription plan and it's part of the mobile app. Eh, not so sure that I think that's a good thing. Tell me what your thoughts are where that is concerned. But for those who might say you sure are showing some favoritism towards the Sierra, aren't you, Tom? I'm glad you made it to this point in the video because I'm about to tell you one of the big differences that I noticed here. Number one, or a couple of big differences. Number one, ride quality. Better with the Tundra, that's for sure. While it's not dramatically different, it is better. There's no doubt about that. The seat uh, seats in both are comfortable. The ride quality is definitely going to be better overall here between the shocks and suspension and how that works. And you do have a nice large screen here. Everything is very, very bright and easy to see. I like that, but a little bit easier to navigate, like I said earlier, on the Sierra. This truck is nice, though, I will say. It handles very well. It just driving down the road, it feels a little bit tighter if that makes sense. Some of you might understand what I'm saying and some of you might not. What do I mean by that? I just mean in how it feels when you turn the steering wheel and how you, as you're driving down the road, and we're going to avoid that same bump we did last time, even though this truck rides better. But to me, that's one of those things about that. And obviously, these trucks are all very easy to see out of, but with this truck, you do have a few more camera views, which all are available on the Sierra as well. You also have the rear view camera mirror on both. But the big difference that I noticed here, I've driven every model of GMC Sierra, I've driven with every engine option there is for those. And I tell you what, the while it's not super aggressive, it's kind of like a little kid punching you in the gut, it's not necessarily going to knock the wind out of you, but you can really feel the torque in this Tundra compared to that of the Sierra because, well, it has more no matter what. It definitely wins out in that area. But overall, each truck is, has its pros. Each truck has its cons. It's really dependent on what you want to drive. One thing I probably should have done was gone out to where I normally do my road noise testing, which is a different area than where we are right now. I just chose this for today's videos. But I will say this. It, to me, it was a little bit more quiet in the Sierra than what we have here in the Tundra. But, and I'll tell you what, wow, the lane keeping assist is pretty aggressive here too. I just, I guess I got too close to the curb and it kind of threw me back over here towards the, the dotted line here. Wow, but oh well, it is what it is. About like a Honda, a lot of the Honda vehicles have very aggressive safety features as far as your lane keeping assist and all that stuff go. But yeah, I really have to say, depending on which one you like, you know, these are great vehicles. Now, one thing that we don't have, no matter what trim level, of the Sierra that you choose to buy, if you're going to buy one, is what you just saw right there. That's why it's good to use your blinkers because it gives you that camera that just came up right there. That's a pretty cool option to have. 
yeah, not necessarily something you have to have, but it is good. And so, well, I was going to go around this slow poke here, but now they've moved over, so we're not going to do that. But whatever the case is, I need to be in this lane. But, you know, I'm always interested to know what your feedback is. You really need to get out and drive these trucks for yourselves. I can show you all of the features and all of the functionality. When it comes to the test drive, that is honestly, in my personal opinion, the most useless thing in a car review video or truck review video on YouTube because what I might say is really good, you might hop into the truck and say, you know, Tom, I don't think that the ride quality is as good as you said it was. Or you might say it's better. You really need to experience these vehicles for yourself, but still try to do the best I can for you. So tell me what your thoughts are. Which truck would you prefer and why? Maybe there's some features you'd like to see that are on one truck that should be on the other. I'm always curious to know what your feedback is between the two trucks. So I've got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me both of these trucks for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.